In this video, we're going to handle unit selection and control in Unity ECS. We're going to make various systems and components to listen to input and give commands. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So this is what we want to create. We have a bunch of units in our scene and they are all just standing around. Now using the mouse button, I can click and drag to draw a selection area and all the units inside that area get selected. As you can see, we can visually see the selection. Then by using the right mouse button, I can give a move order to tell the units to go to a certain position. The positions that they go to are dynamically generated, so select those and as you can see, they do not overlap. They all go into various positions around our target position. So here I can select all of them, tell them all to go there, and they all go into different positions, and none of them are overlapping and everything looks good. So I can select just a bunch of them, and tell them to go there, 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 and so on. I can also just click on a unit to select each one individual. So, just like this, we have a very nice RTS unit control system. So this is our goal, let's get to it! So here we are in our scene, and for starters I just have a simple entity being spawned, there's no input, no controls, and I can't do anything. So let's look at the code to see how we're spawning this. Over here we have our main script, and down here we go into our start. We are just setting up the camera, initializing the animations, and in here we are spawning our unit. We randomize the spawn position, and here it is our entity. So we create an entity archetype. First of all, with the marine component, this is just a simple empty tag component. Then we have the translation for the position, a move to which we're going to use in order to give our unit some commands, and then some simple animation components. So again, just a basic unit being spawned, and here he is just standing around. Okay, great. Now let's get started listening to our input. So over here on our project files, let's create a new C -sharp script, and we're going to call this the unit control system. Now in here we're working with ECS, so instead of a mono behavior, this will be a component system. Okay, so we have our nice update function, and now in here let's do a very simple listen to our mouse input. So we do if input dot get mouse button down on the left mouse button, so button zero. So here we have our mouse pressed, and then we have, and here we have the mouse released. Okay, so we now know when the player presses and releases the mouse. Now we're trying to control our units, so that means we need to know the selection area. So we need to know when we started pressing the mouse and when we released it. So here let's store the starting position. So store a private flow 3 for the start position. And in here we set it on the mouse world position. So for that I'm going to use a function from the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from IntiCodeMonkey.com. And here I got a function that returns the mouse world position. Okay, so we have our start position that is set when we press our mouse, and now when we release we have our end position. And now with the start and the end we can do some simple math in order to get our selected area corners. So here we have our lower left and upper right position. We just do a math.min and a math.max in order to calculate it. And now with the lower left and upper right, essentially we have our selection area. So all we need to do is figure out which units are inside that area. So in here, let's cycle through our entities. So entities for each. In here, let's grab the translation component. So all we need to do is test if they're inside the selection area. So if the entity position dot x is bigger than the lower left, so 
So if the position is within our bounds, then let's just do a simple debug.log to see. So do a debug.log of our entity. All right, so let's test and we should be able to see various logs depending on how many entities we have selected. So here we are and here's the console. If I just click on nowhere, then we see nothing. But if I start in here and let go in here, yep, there you go, there's our entity. It was indeed inside our selection area. Now let's see with two entities. Okay, here we have two entities, start in here, stop in here, and yep, there's nothing. Start here, stop there, and yep, entity one, one, start, let go, and yep, zero, one, and I'll select both of them, and yep, there you go, select both. Okay, awesome. So we are now correctly identifying which entities are inside our selection area. All right, now before we make a component to actually select our units, let's make a visual to be able to see our selection area. So this will be very simple. In here, let's just make an empty game object. This will be the selection area. And now inside, let's make another empty game object. This will be the sprite. Add the sprite render component. Add our simple white pixel. Let's tint it. And here, let's just shift the sprite to that corner. So put it on 0.5 and 0.5. So that way the pivot right there on the parent is on the lower left. So just like that, we can easily place this transform wherever we start and then we scale it to reach our end position. All right, that's it, very simple. And by default, let's start with it disabled so that it's hidden. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually have a reference for it. Now, when using ECS, we don't have instances of our systems attached to game objects. So in here, we can't just add a serialized field. So in order to grab our reference, let's go into our main script and up here add our field. So this will be our transform for the selection area transform. Okay, now in the editor, just drag our reference. Here's our script and just drag the selection area. Okay, so now we have our reference in here. Obviously, if you were using this in a proper game, you would manage your references better. But for now, just for testing, this works fine. So we have our static instance which is set on our wake so we can access this instance in order to access our transform. So let's go into our control system. And now the first thing we need to do is make it visible when we have the mouse down. So in here, when we start pressing our mouse, let's go into our main script to access the instance and the selection area transform. And we just go to the game object, set active into true. Then when we let go, we want to hide it. So we set it back into false. And now here in the middle is when we need to actually scale it. So let's do a if input dot get mouse button on the same mouse button. So this code runs while the mouse is held down. So in here, we just need to actually scale it. So we grab a flow three for the selection area size and selection area size is the current mouse world position minus the start position. And then we just set the local scale in here. And when we press on the mouse button, we also need to locate it. So in there we scale it and in here we set the position. So the position will be the start position. All right, that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here we are. Let's see, press the mouse button, drag it. And yep, there's our nice selection area right there. Okay, so as you can see in here, it's not selecting any and there, Yep, we select one, there's select another one, and select both. Okay, awesome. So everything is working correctly. All right, so with our visual selection area working, let's actually select our units. The way we're going to select them is with a very simple tag component. So let's go in here, simply make a public struct. This will be the unit selected, and it's a I component data. Here, this is just a simple tag, so we're not going to add any fields. And now down here, when we are locating all our units inside the selection area, all we need to do is add our tag component. So we go into the post update commands to add a component to this entity, add the unit selected component. All right, that should do it. Let's test. Here we have our two units. Let's try selecting just this one. Okay, now let's look at the entity debugger. And here we are, and yep, you can see that this one does not have, and this one does have the unit selected component. Okay, awesome. 
Now that we have our selected component being added, let's make a system in order to actually visually see it. So in here, let's make a public, we're going to call this the unit selected renderer, and it's a component system. Now in here, we cycle through all the units that have the selected component. So we are cycling through entities that have the unit selected component and grabbing their translation. And now in here, let's just do a simple draw mesh. So we do a graphics dot draw mesh. Now in here, we need a mesh and material. So let's add that into our main script. So here we add a material for the unit selected circle material and also a mesh. Okay, now for the mesh, we can make the mesh through code. So in here we create the mesh. Already have a nice function to create just that. It takes a mesh width and a mesh height. So let's try some values. Here is the create mesh function. As you can see, it's very simple. It just creates a simple quad through code. So we have four vertices, four UVs and our triangles and simply creates a mesh and assigns them. So very simple code. All right, now let's take care of our material. So here we make a new material. This will be the selected circle material. And over here I have a nice sprite, which is a circle. So we can use just that. And here for the color, let's tint it in green. All right, great. So this is our material. Now let's drag the references here on the game handler. And we just need to drag the selected circle material and the mesh is created through code. Okay, so we have our references for the things we need. Now back into the control system. And here we can now render that. So we grab the instance, grab the mesh. For the position, let's pass in translation.value. Quaternion.identity, since we don't want rotation. Now for the material. And finally on layer zero. All right, so we have our very simple unit selected renderer, which is going to draw a mesh on top of all the units that are selected. So let's see. Okay, here we are and none of them is selected. Select nothing and yep, nothing happens. Now select this one and yep, there you go. There's the selected mesh. Now we obviously need to move it and sort it correctly, but yep, the mesh is being drawn. And if we select this one, yep, there you go, also in there. Okay, awesome. Okay, again, let's see, and yep, now it looks much better. It's behind it, and yep, it's correctly placed. Okay, great. Now, however, we do have one tiny issue. In here, when we select a unit, we can no longer deselect it. So right now, if I select nothing, it should deselect these two, but it currently doesn't. So let's solve that. Now, we can solve this in a very, very simple way. In here, let's go. When we release our mouse from position, calculate the positions, okay. And in here, before we do our selection, we can simply deselect everything. So in here, we just cycle through entities with the unit selected component. And we do a for each. Okay, so in here, we are cycling through all the entities that have the unit select component. And in order to deselect it, all we need to do is actually remove the component. So again, go into the post update commands in order to remove the component of type unit selected. And that's it. So first we deselect every single we need. So first we deselect every single entity, and then we select the ones inside the area. Okay, let's see. Okay, so here we are. Now I can select nothing, and yep, nothing is selected. Now select this one. Okay, it's selected. Now select nothing, and it should deselect. And yep, there it is. It deselects. So I can select, deselect. Select both them, deselect, select this one and this one. Okay, awesome. So we have all our controls correctly working exactly as intended. Now, another potential issue we have is the size of the selection area. So right now, our system works great when we want to drag from A to B. So start here and stop here, and yep, it's selected correctly. However, in the current system, it's very difficult to select just one unit. So if I click right on top of this one, I can't actually select it. I need to make a small bounding box in order to actually get it. 
So one solution to this problem is to simply check the size of our selection area and if it's too small we automatically increase it. So let's do that. Here in our control system when we release the mouse we have the lower left and upper right positions. And now in here let's do a simple distance check. So we do a if math.distance between the lower left and the upper right. If that distance is under a certain amount, so in here a float for the selection area min size. So if the size of the selection area is under this amount, then we want to increase it. So here if the selection area is too small, let's expand it. So we move the lower left position, we increase it. Okay, so we essentially expand the lower left and the upper right positions. Then the rest of our logic works exactly the same with both of our updated values. So let's see. Okay, so here we are in the normal selection. Yep, it still works. Now if I just click on him, yep, there you go, it's select that one, click and select. Okay, awesome. So we no longer need to create a bonding box in order to select each of them. All right, now that we have our unit selection working, let's see how we can give them orders. We have the left mouse button to select, and now we're going to use the right mouse button in order to give a move order. So again, here on our system, let's do a if input get mouse button down, but in this case, we want the right mouse button, so button one. If we press the right mouse button, let's give an order to all of our selected units. So we're going to do a cycle very much like this one. So I go through all the units selected, and in here we give the order. Now in this example, as you saw on our archetype, in here we have the move to component. This is what's handling a very simple move to, so let's see the component. We have a boolean to see if this unit is moving, a position that it's moving towards, and a movement speed. Then we have this system, which as you can see, very simple. We just test the distance towards the target position, and if we are too far, we move towards it. And if we're already there, we stop moving. Okay, so extremely simple movement. So let's go and do that. So in here, we need our entity. Then also a reference to the move to component. Now we need to do is set the move to position to be our mouse world position. Okay, that should do it. So when we press the right mouse button, we go through every single unit that is selected and we tell it to go to the mouse position. Let's see. Okay, so here we are, and if no unit is selected, I press the right mouse button, obviously nothing happens. Now select this one, now right click, and yep, there you go, we told that unit to go there, and it did indeed go. So select that one, now select that one, tell it to go, and yep, we have our orders. Okay, awesome, so we can now select our units and give them orders to each of them. So that is working, but one issue we have is regarding overlapping units. So in here, if a unit is right on top of the other one, and we select both of them and tell them to go there and they both go exactly into the same position. So right now we can no longer actually separate them because if I click on there, he's going to automatically select both of them. Now we can solve this selection problem very simple. We test if we are doing a normal click and if so, we're only going to select a single unit. So in this case, we would be able to select just one, push it to the side and then they would be separated. Okay, let's do it. All we need to go is go up here so in here we define a bool, let's say the select only one entity, and by default we start at false, because by default we want to select multiple, and only in here, when the selection area is too small, then we set it to true, so we select only one entity, and in here let's make an int for the selected entity count, and we increase it when we select an entity, and we're only going to run this code if the select only one entity is false, so we are meant to select multiple, or the selected entity count is under one. So this way, when we do a simple click, we will select just one entity, but when we do a selection area, we will select all of them. Let's see. Okay, here we are, and select one, yep, it works, give it a movement, works, select that one, works, now select both of them put them both one on top of the other, and now I can select one, and yep, it only selected one. Since they are both overlapping, if I do a simple click, then just selects one unit. So select them both, they're both on top, and yep, like that. Okay, great. 
So that's another simple problem that we have solved. Okay, so far so good. We have our unit selection and control. Now we have solved the overlapping problem. If two units are overlapping and we click, we can now separate them. However, we still have the issue that both of them go exactly into the same position. So here with four units, it becomes quite a bit of a problem if they all go exactly into the same position, that looks quite bad. So we should really be giving each unit a different position. So we want to calculate positions around the target position so that each unit goes to a different position but near the target position. Let's do that. Here in our control system, let's go down here. This is where we're telling our units to move. Now let's generate a list of positions. So in here, a list of float three. Let's make the move position list. And right now let's just manually make the list. So in here, the first one will be the target position. So let's make here a float three for the target position, which will be the mouse world position. So this is our first position. And now let's put a second position right on the right. Okay, so here we have a list with four different positions. Now when we tell the unit to go somewhere, let's give it a position from our list. So let's make a rotating index. So an int for the position index, and we start at zero. And in here, we give it the position from the move position list of position index. So that one gets that position, and then we increase our index. So index equals our index plus one, and grab the remainder of the move position list dot count. So if we have more units selected than positions in here, we simply rotate them. So let's see if the units are indeed going to different positions. Let's select all four, move them all in there, and yep, they all went to different positions. Okay, great. Now here we have 10 units, let's select all of them, tell them to move, and yep, now we have some overlap since it is reusing positions. Okay, so the logic is working, and all we really need is to create more positions. Let's make a simple function to automatically generate positions within a circle. Let's make that function. So a private, this will return a list of flow three. Let's call this the get position list around, since we're going to get the positions around a target position. So a flow three for our starting position. Then let's receive a float for the distance and an int for the position count. So we're going to automatically generate this many positions within this distance of this position. So we do a cycle through all of the positions. Let's calculate the angle for this index. So we define a circle between this number of positions. So here let's get a direction vector based on this angle. So let's make a function to do just that. We'll return a flow three. So here we have a function where we take a vector and we apply an angle to it. And then we calculate the position based on the start position, and then we move towards the direction by that distance. And then we simply add it to our position list. Okay, so we are generating as many positions as we want. Let's just add the start position up here. And now we can use this function. Let's go in here in order to get our move position list. So we're going to grab it using our function. For the start position, it will be the target position. For the distance, let's put 10 units away. And position count, let's just generate five. So let's see what that works. So we should have five positions plus our target position in a circle within 10 units of the target position. Okay, here we are, select them all, tell them all to go there. And yep, there you go, as you can see, it did generate five positions around our target position. All right, so that logic is working. Now let's push it one step further in order to generate in various rings outside of our target position. So this would be the first ring, then we would have another one outside, another one outside. Let's do.
Okay, here's our function. We take a start position, then an array of ring distances and an array of position counts. We start by adding the start position, then we cycle through all of the rings and we calculate those positions using our function. So now we can go up here, instead of using this, let's use the other version. So we pass in the start position, then we pass in an array of floats for our ring distance. So the first ring will be 10 units away, the second one 20, then 30. Then for the positions, the first ring will have five positions, the second one 10, and the third one 20. All right, so just like this, we are already generating a lot of different positions. Now let's see, here's our 10 units, select all of them, tell them about to go here. And there they go, and yep, there you go, they all went into different positions. So now I can move all of them, I can select some going there, some going there, and yep, everything worked great. Let's add more units. Okay, here we have 30, select all of them, tell them all to go right there, and they all go into different positions. So everything looks very nice, and now we have a very nice army. Now select just those, select just those, just those, and yep, we have multiple squads in a nice RTS unit control system. Now, if you want, you could further improve this by adding some sort of validation based on pathfinding or just doing some simple physics raycasts. So you generate all the positions and then you validate which ones are valid. So here with our full system, we can click and start to drag and select all the units inside a selection area. We can also just click on one of them and move it individually. We are giving our orders by right clicking on a unit and telling it to move and all our units move to positions that are generated around a target move position. So just like that, we have a very nice RTS unit control system. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.